Ten seconds remaining. Do you play Dota 2? Would stakes make your games more exciting? No, no, not those stakes. These stakes! Log into our website and challenge a friend, or search for a quick match. Choose your settings and get matched in what we call a stake to play game. Hold on, just gonna win this. Yeah! Yeah! Victory. And when you win, you can buy, I don't know, a stake or whatever. And yeah, that's basically how ePulse works. So sign up and play at ePulse.com. Hi guys, Slasher here. In this series, Slasher dissect Handsome Assassin. Uh, my name is Jenkins Dota. Place your bets on more than 15 esports games using the worldwide payments and even Bitcoin. We offer 24 7 support and bonuses for every new user. Best esports bets on gg.bet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Overpower Cup. We are here with game number two between Pro Dota as well as NIP, of course, we're sponsored by ePulse as well as Pugna.com, GG.bet, where you can find all of your Dota 2 tournament betting, and of course, Matcharino.com, where if you sign up, you get a free $1 contributed toward this prize pool. Remain. With all that said, we are going to jump into the game, into the draft. We're a little bit late into it, but man, we have a lot to talk about, Braxes. Guess what? Not only is there a Monkey King, but there's also a Visage. Time. Yeah, very interesting to see. Monkey King, fun stuff. We saw yesterday, Zion the Monkey King looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. I personally think he's a very strong hero. He's got uh, a pretty cool gimmick with the transform thing. I don't know if you guys have been to reddit.com, but we had some great plays of uh, transforming into a courier, running into the enemy's base and killing theirs. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. That's actually hilarious. <laughs> yeah. What? He transformed into a uh, courier, ran all the way down through the mid lane into the enemy fountain. And what people do is they position the courier at the very edge of the fountain where it's not uh, invulnerable mm -hmm. so that they can buy their bottle quicker and it reaches them faster. I just killed it and TP'd out. What? That seems ridiculous. How does that happen without people noticing? That's the I don't know. Question. Well, whatever. Anyway, uh, the Visage Big, the Vengeful Spirit pick coming out as well. Um... 
we should mention that we saw um, uh, Monkey King yesterday, actually, in our first game of the series. Uh, n- not not the EG series that was two days ago, but yesterday. We also saw Monkey King. Five Didn't get off to a very fast remain. start, but the thing was, it was uh, comboed up with good armor reduction heroes. Um, plenty of good auto time. attack damage coming out. And so despite the fact that the Monkey King didn't get off to the fastest start, um, it still worked out very well. So th- that's the thing about this hero. Despite it not working out early on in the game, you are still probably going to have a very good, you know, I guess mid-game. Because let's be honest, Brax, you really don't want to fight into Wukong's command regardless of how little right-click damage you have. Uh, it's yeah, not I agree you want to be inside that. of. You've also got uh, the Terror from Venge. Visage is like a natural Solar Crest buyer too, so yeah. lots of negative armor. And there's also, can you imagine a Dark Seer vacuum into Wukong's command? Doesn't that just sound terrible? It sounds awful, actually. Yeah. I think we actually saw that in like EM when uh, before Monkey King was out of the Captain's Draft when he was still insanely broken. We saw a Monkey King Dark Seer combination that absolutely destroyed. I think it was Adfitum that did uh, did it, um, and they destroyed that game. Um, it was against OG and was the only game they won against OG in that series. Uh, but you have it now. Not only that, but you have the Iron Shell as well with the Monkey King to chase people down. And you're absolutely right about the armor reduction between the Vengeful, Vengeful Spirit and the Visage. Natural armor reducers, natural Silver uh, Crest Carrier for Visage, and even Venge if she wants it. So Pro Dota, they go for the opening that actually NIP had last game, which is the Ogre Mag, Ogre Mag yeah. Giant Jug. Um, so, uh, again, they have a bit of early game, but they're not going for that pushing strat that we saw with the Jakiro. Instead, they pick up the Witch Doctor and the Marana, and they're going more of a team fight oriented type uh, game, it looks like. Okay, Core Marana. I'm not convinced that uh, this hero does much this game, but I want to see how it plays out. So, against Monkey King, do you pick things that cut trees down, like from your offlane, Beastmaster, uh, Batrider? Or does that not really matter? Right, because it feels like. Before you even get to that stage of the game, he just is so mobile. And um, do you need something like Spirit Breaker to like counter his aggression? You know, I'm not sure exactly what the best way to I play against Spirit this Breaker is. might be a good choice. We'll we'll probably see it. You know, as as this hero gets picked more and more, we'll probably see Spirit Breaker get experience experimented with against this hero. But I think uh, going back to your question, I, I thought Timbersaw was good against this hero when it first came out, but then you realize exactly what you were talking about. By the time you, you have your tree-cutting abilities, which is pretty early on for, for Timbersaw even, he's, he's still already in the trees, jumping around, very mobile, and, and finding you know, plenty of kills. Remaining. I think, Right, he's um, like, uh, he plays as a support, you know, so it's not like you're ever going to see him with right. your offlane, exactly. you know, Timbersaw or whatever. Right. So maybe more of a support that could take care of it. The thing that's interesting to me is they don't, other than a quelling blade, they have no way of cutting trees down. So it looks right. like they're not interested at all. And dealing with this monkey king, they're probably I wonder, to play with it now. I wonder if Spirit Breaker charges him. You know how it like pushes? If it pushes him off the tree, will it stun him for like the three seconds or three and a half so. seconds or whatever? I would think it. I think that's an, the intended reaction. Because okay, because if so, it, that could be like the hardest counter probably. I mean, like, so he gets pushed. It's not like he stays on the tree, right? At least if we're talking like, let's talk like lore. All right. If a spirit breaker charge were to hit a monkey king, he wouldn't be able to stay on the tree, right? We don't think that would be that should okay. be something that, that is happened. very logical. Yes. So, however, Dota two does not always follow logic. You're right about this. <laughs> you're very, you're very <laughs> correct. But I would imagine that if it's not Radiant the intended consequence, pick. now I want to test this, man. Somebody in chat, go ahead and test that for me, and I will give you a shout out. I don't know, maybe give you money. I'll I saw send you a picture uh, of my nipples. I'm not sure. Nice, nice. That's high quality right there. Oh, I saw Darkseer vacuum a Monkey King off the trees, and he wasn't stunned for the three seconds. Really? Yeah. That seems crazy. Yeah. When I saw that, I was very confused. All right, Storm Spirit, pretty good last pick. Great at killing the healing ward, but they do have some uh, quick stuns here yeah, on Poe Dota. Yeah, they do. Um, but he could avoiding those stuns. He could he could be in an okay position. I don't really. I think this was a very Despite all this stuff, I think this was a very good last pick for, for Ninja Japan. Pan- yeah, I think, I think it's a very so good too. Storm game as well, despite all that. Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I don't know anything about this Visage right now. We're not going to, you know, we'll see how it goes. But with the Monkey King, I, I'm I'm willing to bet that this is going to be a pretty good game for, for them. So they're going to have, I would imagine, a Vengeful Spirit carry along with the Visage Monkey King Ten roaming support. Remaining. Darkseer in the off lane and Storm Spirit in the safe lane. As much as I want to see a carry Visage Five like we did back remaining. in EM2, it's probably not going to happen. Um, and by probably, I mean definitely. So yep. maybe someday. 
So it looks like uh, Pro Dota have a pretty disgusting off lane, saying King Ogre. But um, Ninjas and Pajamas also have a disgusting off lane with the potential Ion Shell Monkey King Darkseer. But uh, Venge and Vistage together is a very, very strong lane. So I don't know how much they can accomplish there. So um, this game pretty much... Like, Podoro's lineup is really dependent on Sand King's Blink Dagger, right? Mm. Ogre and the Witch Doctor are pretty, like, beefy in lanes and stuff. So it's interesting to see how this will play out. Uh, that's... I, I don't know, just looking at the draft right now, especially because of the Monkey King, I, I would definitely favor an IP, but that's my opinion. Right, right, you want to be on the team with the Monkey King, yeah. not playing against it. Exactly, exactly. Despite e Even if it doesn't have the best start in the world, I, I would still go... Monkey King. Uh -huh. He's got six abilities. Yeah, he's pretty good. How cool is that? He's a pretty good hero. I mean, let's. Two of his abilities are the same kind of, sort of. I guess Tree Dance is like. I guess it's two abilities. You jump the tree and then you could, you know, slow people down. It's. It's pretty nuts. Jingu Mastery is still a very good ability, by the way. It's still very strong, even with the nerfs. Yep. Hmm. And the new build seems to be one point in Tree Dance early on in the game, then Jingu Mastery. And then you start getting your stun and more Jingu Mastery. So you only really need to get that one point in Tree Dance, which I think is, you know. Primal Spring, you know, damage increases, but apparently nobody really cares about that. I didn't know that the Primal Spring ability was, a uh, like, you charge it up. And then the damage and slow is based off the charge. So he can actually use it to just, like, you know, he can drop it whenever. Yeah. I remember you said that the other day, too, when we were watching Zai. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that's true. I was up at uh, 5 a.m. this morning, and it was LGD. They had a, a core Monkey King, actually. Did it work, or did it get crushed? Um, I didn't watch the end of it, but they were doing well. I don't know if they closed it out, but he went for, like, a Vanguard Echo Saber build. Damn it. I was so interested. <laughs> like, the tease. Oh, I wonder how this is going to end. Oh, I guess we'll have to find out some other time. I'll look at Dota both later or something. Right, Era and come with me are gonna spot. Oh, come with me. That ward is. Yeah. Goodbye. Gone. See you later. Damn. That was a fast TP from Era. Other wards that were placed down in the meantime, Insania oh came up God. top, dropped a ward near the. Do you see this up top, Monkey King? He's a uh, baby Rosha. Oh wow, he really What's is. What's going on up here? And he's smoked up too. Don't tell me he's going in their base. I would love that. I don't think he is though. When uh, he's a courier, he has 350 movement speed. Well, why do so that when you just tree dance around the entire map? Yeah, very true. This is actually... Oh my god, is he gonna see the courier if he hops towards it? He well, sees it, but... there is a strike bottom and ignite. I think Hani might be dead here. Good magic in the solar grave shield comes out as well. He might actually live. Oh, he looks fine. And uh, Sand King also has Burrow Strike at level 1 now, so they can't push in for that early side pull. Yeah. Actually, quite a big deal. I think this is fine for an IP. Monkey King, I was keeping my eye on him. I was like, is he really going to find all this? But instead, they... It looks like they're going to give away three bounty runes here for, to Pro Dota. Yep, so a good start for them. It's game winning. I'll take that. Pretty good. I'll click for the only other person on an IP to get one. Uh, more Jug Arcana. Pro Dota has it too. Go Garter. Great, uh, great, great set. Great cosmetics. Okay. Just air cat. Let me pull this creep over real quick. Yeah. Yep. Easy. Good play. Good playing. Ignite coming out. Quick for already getting caught. Body he does have the bit. arrow. Arrow will come through. Well, Quick was uh, gonna die here. He's dead, I think. Yeah. I believe that's dead hero. Mike will get the first blood. He didn't have a fairy fire, so easy kill for them. Good arrow, good good stun or good slow from come with me, and good body blocks. So already, Rodota getting off to a pretty quick start here. Yep, nice rotation. Very unexpected from Quaco uh, apparently. Got him off guard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way uh, the lanes are set up. Jerksy top. He's coming in for round two, man. He's mad. He's ready to go. He literally just ran around. Clarity, and now he's coming back. There's no vision. Quickfoot's pretty close to the tower. This one is a much more difficult kill. And dare I say impossible, given the positioning of Quickfoot. This is not a fun lane, all of a sudden. This ogre... Yeah, Bui set up on a Cheshire cap on Yeah, lane. they're going for it. There's the Primal Spring. They have the Grave Chill up as well. Air is going to get the Magic Missile. They have the damage. He has Burrow Strike. I don't think they get this kill. They're not really strong enough yet. No Soul Assumption. No Wave of Terror. 
Uh, Boogie doesn't have a stun, so they need some levels here. Meanwhile, oh, mid, lane. With me, mid lane. Come with me, almost going down to the tower. Quakefa, if he gets one more auto attack off, might be a kill. So come with me, bidding, getting a bit too aggressive. Um, and now has to be careful. Yep, so close. All those harassed mid lane, forcing Quakefa to go in for some shrine time. Yeah, he's gonna be able to come back in. Get some CS here, but he's at three last hits to the eight of the Marana from Mike. Uh, pretty good start, I'd say, for Pro Dota overall. And they do have six last hits for Trixie top for NIP, but he's already out of the wave and out of the lane. He stays too long, he gets uh, cast up, and then Garter just played Fury spins on him. Also, Jug pretty good against uh, the Iron Shell Creeps, one of the better heroes against it. So. Yeah, Pro Dota's lanes are going very, very well. Ogres. Definitely helping mid lane a lot. Sand King down bottom though, they're setting up on him. Magic Missile, they do have Soul Assumption now. The Grave Shield is there. He still has that Burrow Strike. Here comes the Primal Spring. So another slow will happen. The Soul Assumption will get the kill. And that is just an assault from numerous fronts. And when you get hit by that Primal Spring, you're like, well, I'm probably dead now. Good, good stuff. Yeah. This lane gets so much stronger when they hit too, once they get the Soul Assumption up. Uh, Monkey King's next build too. Monkey King's one of those heroes that, he's kind of like Earth Spirit, you know, where he wants all his skills. This dive is a heavy dive from Garter. Cast will come out, Boogie might be in trouble. Maledict dropped as well, Jingu Mastery, and won't be able to save his life. So that TP does not work out. And a pretty good dive from Brodo. And rough stuff from Boogie. Yeah, very uh, unfortunate. Is our cat not again? Soul Assumption, two more auto attacks needed. Can he get the Soul Assumption range? Does no, he no mana. It? Oh my god, he's out of mana. Rough. That is rough. That would have been a kill for Hani, potentially. Not quite there. Now Primal Spring mid lane. Mike has leap. Boogie's just trying to harass. No stun is available. He's still gonna get him. Overload. Overload proc. Jingu Mastery. They are diving the fairy fire. They need two more auto attacks. The Primal Spring is ready. Boogie, can he go for it? No, it's not. He just oh jumps in the tree and gets the auto attack. Sal will come through, which saves his life. My God. He and he's gonna steal the bounty rune and get us level three. Damn, dude. That's. Oh God. How do you deal with that? It's not like he didn't even use his Primal Spring. He just dropped to the ground and got the kill. He dies through the leap. Oh, Cheshire Cat. No. Cheshire Cat. Oh, no. The Pearl Strike. That's not good. Oh, my God, Boogie. Oh, there's a sh there's no shrine. On cool there's down. no shrine. He just needs two auto attacks. Oh, oh my Boogie God. just gets a solo kill. Come, Come with, with me. Next. He's got Jigu Master, no man. You don't want to fight this. Get out of here. Run. God, Boogie's actually owning. Great hero. <laughs> oh, my God. Some grindy stuff right there, let me tell you. Yeah. Oh. Alright. Well, aside from all the uh, clowny stuff, Fodota's still good lane phase. Yeah. Losing a couple of heroes perhaps when they shouldn't, but I'd say they have some good stuff going for them. Garter's still farming very well. So too is Mike, despite that death. And they're in a very good spot right now. Meanwhile, bottom lane era is getting some good farm as well. He had to miss a few CS because he was going to help for that kill from Cheshire Cat, but uh, he does miss out on it. So his landing phase is going all right. Could be better. Uh, award placed down by Boogie, but uh, I don't know. That Observer Award, I believe, was placed before it, the Dire one. So I'm not sure if they saw Boogie on the high ground, on the on the trees. They, they saw him now. hop uh, yeah. through the lane to get there, but I'm not sure if they know he placed the ward there. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. A lot of heroes from Podota coming in towards bottom lane. Oh, they really are. They got a smoke. It's a three hero gang squad. Dark Cab looking for the Burrow Strike. Grave Chill can come out. There's the cast coming through. This dive is a bit hefty. Maldick will miss, and they need to be careful. Magic Missile comes out. Soul Assumption might get this kill on the Cheshire Cat. Sandstorm not in time. Doesn't matter. They still get the kill on the Vengeful Spirit. So good dive coming out. But here comes Boogie. I don't think he can find anything. I think they're just going to back. If he was closer to Cheshire Cat, it's maybe a kill he can get, but. Already that rotation, that gang squad works out perfectly for Pro Dota. Yep, supports are happy to soak up the experience when the carry dies. Don't worry guys, I got you. Let me get my level 6. Let me get my Vistage for the first like 5 minutes. He's a ways away though. Eventual Spirit is a very uh, momentum based carry. Mm -hmm. Like, you definitely do not want to fall behind with this sort of hero. Oh god. Wow, what just happened? I can't believe he was All in the right. jungle. I Disaster. 
All right, I'm triggered. Double damage on Mike. Picking up the double <sighs> killer. I thought he was still mid. I didn't know he was going to come bottom. Well, he just got a double kill, which is pretty nifty. That is not a good sign for an IP. Yeah, I feel like if a pro Dota just keep running at bottom lane, their heroes can't really turn the fight that well. Oh, be oh tangling. He's got a clawing blade. Yep, He's ready gonna to cut go. down all the trees. The uh, ward from Pro Dota in the bottom lane doing some fantastic work right now. Oh yeah. Keeping track of all these heroes. Getting vision of Boogie is very important. You see Cheshire Cat, if they want to jump they can. It looks like they're not going to make that go. They don't know if anybody's behind Insania as well as Cheshire Cat. It's a very dangerous position to be in. So Boogie, although getting some good stuff going. See if we can get something here. Primal Spring does connect. He did have a stun. He misses it, however, as the Burrow Strike comes out. Gas Kamalda coming through. Magic Missile. They want to get Insania. Another Burrow Strike ready in about five. Arrow coming through. It's under Boogie. Starstorm brings one down, and they should get Arrow as well with the Maldic ticking away. And one last tick will do the Java and heal fall. Now Honda getting Burrow Struck as well. And Mike rotating in for another double kill. He's already almost got his point booster ready to go, and it's now 8 to 3 in the score here, Brax. Yeah, baited perfectly from Podota. They had total vision. They knew exactly what was going on there. Excellent TP rotation. And um, I'm worried for Nip at this point. You know, Storm didn't have the greatest start. He's a hero that really, really wants his alone time. You know, he doesn't really typically want to fight that early on. Mm -hmm. And he takes a long time to come online, and uh, they're just punishing Era over and over. Now, nobody's really off to a fast start here for uh, NIP. Um, I mean, they can fight later on down the road once they get some items, especially on their Storm Spirit. But as of right now, even Trixie's not getting the most farmed in the world. Yep, he found a fat triple stack, though. He's going to clean that up. Yeah. Good stuff. That's a good farm going his way. Now he can start getting some extra CS. But all the meanwhile, Top Garter is still farming pretty well. Um, sitting at second in the net worth, of course, to Mike and Mike will. It's just one of those games, I guess. Oh, no. This Marana pick has, has started to work out pretty damn well for them. Yep, I had no faith in the uh, Cormorana, but this guy is only big time. Wing, Trixie getting stunned up, Blade Fury, but he's not going to fall, maybe not. Ignite's there. Blade Fury, the surge wasn't enough. I guess he was stunned during the surge. Now ball letting in. If they can get Garter here, it would be great. He has Omni Slash Quick, but needs to be careful, and they won't chase any further. The Healing Ward was taken out by uh, the ball Epi down bottom. Attack. But Cheshire Arrow Cat will find again. Vengeful Spirit Strike. in the bottom lane. Hani really can do only the... You just watch at this point as Cheshire Cat comes with Burrow Strike. Actually, Epicenter to get that kill, too. Wow. Yep, Venge's stun doesn't uh, come out fast enough when Sand King uh, burrows and casts Epi right away. Very hard for him to deal with that right now. This is the type of start we saw last game from Burrow, uh, except I think they, they might have a better time in the mid game than previously. It's going to be about 4,000 that with advantage, which is pretty big. Um, and it'll get even bigger as Mike gets up to his Aghanim Scepter. Right now, setting up potentially for an air on Dequikva. We'll see if he can find it. It's not going to be the easiest one in the world. Swap on bottom. Cheshire Cat's in some trouble. Yeah, stunned up. Boogie gets the kill. Or at least helps get the kill with the Soul Sucking. Top lane, Trixie has surged himself and is probably dead, I would say. He's looking pretty dead. Yeah. Surged right in the middle. As that blade figure came out, the, uh, the Fire Blast made sure he wasn't moving anywhere. All right, well... When they get Cheshire Cat, they lose Trixie top. top. Not great. Is under attack. They're still getting farmed for BK. Garter is not pushing the tower. I don't know, man. I feel like this is a really bad position for NIP to be in. Because all of a sudden, you have Proto grouping up. They have a uh, Blink Dagger potentially coming for the Sand King anytime soon. Surprisingly, no. He's only got Tranquils somehow. And not in yeah, he uh, hasn't attack. gotten the most farm out of lane, but he's still Radiant's pressuring lane really heavily. Level 7 right now. Mm. Very hard for... Uh, the heroes of NIP to deal with. Looks like they do want to defend top somewhat. Hani's about to hit his little 6 up here. Boogie TP'd in too. Stun's gonna come out. He has the uh, Primal Spring if he needs it to treat in. This is the are up. Here's the ball lightning. They want at least one kill out of this and come with me while he's tanking even with a raindrop. So there's no way he can survive all of these heroes. But they don't get the big prize, which is Garter. CTP's elsewhere. They already have Mikae pushing mid, and they're, they're looking at bottom to take as well. So, trades across the map potentially. Uh, we'll see. It looks like an MP, an IP are going to try to push with this Vistage Miller coming out. Yep, Aero realizes that the opposite team is making the exact same movement. Gets out of it before dying. 
aggressive play mid. Arrow. Leaps in for the arrow. Yeah, he missed it. Starstorm bringing him down low. Two more auto attacks. Should get the kill. One more and they'll find it. Meanwhile, Deathcore pushes Trixie back. They were all positioned to try to get that kill. So VK pretty much finds his solo there. And uh, again, gets himself even closer. To He's going to have like a 13 minute Aggative Scepter, I think. With a yeah, kill it's going to be fast. Bottle. Going straight for pretty much no upgrade of boost or anything. Uh, very nice play from EK. Realizes that, you know, Nip chain TP top to defend the tower and go for the push. Just dives mid lane. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tracy, not again, man. Oh, oh he stuns during the epicenter, straight. and now they get the primal dance off. Come with me, gonna die to one auto tank. Jeshire Cat might be next, and they have Koyakiva jumping in. They don't have the vision. Sandstorm is still there. Burrow strike away. Overload. They really want this kill. They're going to find it, but now Quirk Fest and Man fighting up against BK. Needs to be careful. He has double damage room, but needs to back up now. Two quick kills. Oh, Boogie with a long range stun and Trixie with the back wall coming out. And they finally get something going for them after a pretty long time. Yeah, Boogie saving the day there. You know, they also have the uh, vacuum boundless strike combo. It's like a. There's no risk in it, you know what I mean? And if they get like the vacuum into the stun combo, mm. it could set up a pretty decent fight with very, very low, uh, you know, nobody's in danger when it happens. They can just throw it out there over and over. And it's something you have to be so careful about for Pro Dota. You know, your positioning is wrong and all of a sudden you get stunned from a mile away and vacuum on top of it. Not an easy thing to deal with. Yep, definitely. Cheshire Cat's still pretty far from his blink, but, uh, doesn't really matter at this point in the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's great if he gets it, but uh, Pro Dota's still able to apply so much pressure across the map that the game isn't, like, sitting waiting for his blink. Right. So, very good. Swap back in Swap the stun. Mid. They have the Wukong's command coming out. He'll leap away, however, but Magic Missile is there. Soul Sun Shoot's ready, and this is a kill. Big one. It's the top network here going down again. And IP turning around right at the same time they did in the last game. Uh, they still need a lot more, but they are going to stop Mikae from getting straight into that Ags. So. Good stuff. Did you lag when uh, yep. the Wukong's command oh, came yeah. out? Yeah, I lagged like hell. Yeah. Oh. Not fixed. Not fixed. Radiance Imbalanced. Imagine, oh my god, can you imagine a vacuum happening with that? Yeah. The game just crashes. People are going to claim it's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Our draft includes lag. That's how we win fights. Yeah, Invis Sand came mid lane looking for uh, kills behind the tower. They are a lot of heroes here for Pro Dota. And Era yeah. is in a compromising position. Luckily, is the Vis Familiars to help out. Cast will come through onto the Familiars, and they will probably die. Epicenter getting channeled again, and uh, it looks to be potentially useful as Hani's getting blown away. Alright, throwing Han to the dogs. <laughs> yeah, he just That's just in. how it is, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I gotta do this. Your life doesn't mean as much as mine. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Oh. That's uh, a creep wave bottom and uh, maybe some extra creeps for Mike is an Agatum Scepter done. And with that, that's huge. Oh, uh, they're wrapping in trying to gank. Well, Boogie has Boogie been here. scouted out. He, they they ping the, the tree. He's going to avoid the arrow but get fire blasted. As well as cast, but still, he might actually... Nah, he's dead. Okay, he's dead. Dragon isn't over yet. Oh, Sandy is receiving the right clicks. Yeah, he's probably gonna die here. He's gonna drop his death ward only to get back you, but now back down. Air coming in. Just shower cat, good bro strike across the tree line. They have this is familiar drop in about two seconds that stone form can come out. That's an interesting time to pause. Yeah, you know, meanwhile, uh Quake fa farming up. He's actually very far in this game. Yeah. He's caught back and, up. Uh, he's like been involved we talked in all about the kills. The yeah, like you brought up in the uh, draft earlier, Storm very strong for the game. Yeah. Surge on an arrow, they're looking for the swap play here. Yep, they're gonna find it. Cheshire Cat has stunned, but I don't think he can be a dog. gets back in with a soul assumption. I was thinking that enemy shrine is at 100%. Full said. And, uh. No. Oh. 15 kills. and a half minute Bloodstone for Koikva. Holy, wow. You weren't kidding. I thought he was close, I didn't know he was that close. This is Bloodstone at the same time they have Agatum Scepter on Mike. I'm not sure which is a bigger item. Probably Mike is just because he gets him a lot more damage early on in this game. Maybe that Boogie set up on mid looking for uh, the jump on Come With Me. He's gonna find it. Come With Me as tanky as he is. He's gonna get stunned up. They have the Jiga Mastery. And the Vistage Familiar drop. And IP have really started to turn this around. Again. Yep.
Cheshire Cat's so close to Blink Dagger. Sitting on 1700 gold. Oh, he's got a big camp here, too. It's against Roman, he talks to finaling it. This is, uh, they need this item. This is a game changing item for them. Blink Burrow into an Aghanim Scepter Starstone could be absolutely gigantic. Not only that, but there's some very good vision for Proto to coming out in the enemy jungle again, much like last game. Uh, Cheshire Cat. Oh, they see Cheshire Cat. Yeah, here. this could be a huge. Oh, God, if he dies here. Oh, he needs to leave. No, oh, he actually Primal Springs too late. Arrow coming out. Cheshire Cat almost has enough money. Proto is going to Shadow. For this. Here we go. They need it back for NIP. I don't think they want to fight this here. Surge away. They're going to try to chase after Buki with Insania, but they won't find anything. They take the ward down. They have a, uh, they've dropped the sentry, and now. Proto didn't know that sentry is there. If they walk into that, there's a good chance they get counter initiated on. But Cheshire Cat, the biggest thing, Brax, is they've completed up his blink dagger. It's ready to go now. Okay, that's very big. Stupendous. There's the mech too for Trixie. Yep. Yeah, it feels like the items are really coming in for uh, Nip right now. You know, Bloodstone, mech, these are some high impact items. Um, with the support duo of Ogre and Witch Doctor, you don't really expect anything to be coming out relatively soon. Both heroes typically don't farm lanes very much. Right. They're more of like the, you know, defense, they, they battle. You know what I mean? They don't sit there and push out lanes. Very true. But the thing is, on the other side, there are items up for, for NMP supports, the medallion. Um, and you can see Boogie trying to get to his basher. The TP top was canceled by Mike. They didn't want to get dove here. So they're just going to farm elsewhere across the map. But uh, Mike's already TP'd out too. Uh, this aggression means that there's a probably, there's a pretty good chance they, they take this tower down. I don't really know how much this blink dagger means for Sanking because uh, Monkey King grants so much vision when he's sitting on top of trees. So it's going to be really hard for him to get an epi off outside of smoke. Oh. He just got a Quick with the solo kill in mid. You even have to Thanks to the uh, arcane ring. TP's oh, he's TP he's TP on, on Cheshire Cat. Oh, Grocer comes out. They're gonna leave. Garter. Now they're gonna get chased down. Primal Spring, Blade Fury. He needs to maybe TP out. They're gonna jump down on the Cheshire Cat. Wukong Span, there's the full Burrow Strike back up in one good sandstorm. He might be able to actually make it out. Another jump gonna come through. Quick has so much mana regen coming out with the bloodstone. Will get himself up to 14 charges of that bloodstone. They won't bring down anybody else. Meanwhile, Era gets the kill on Come With Me into the jungle, who was I think trying to help his comrades out only to die. Um, and yeah, nice TP from uh, Ahani. Gets the Grave Chill out on Come With Me and they catch him. This is not looking good all of a sudden for Brodota. Like, look at the net yeah, worth Yeah, Koifa is sitting comfortably at the top of the net worth now. Yeah. He just picked up his Bloodstone a couple minutes ago. Now he has Treads and 2,500 gold. I like it work it pretty soon. Yeah. He's not going to be quick by yet, but we'll see. Good work game yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, I think, why the Jug is built in Mantis style. Oh, one of the reasons, anyway. There's, there's multiple reasons, but that's one of them. Yeah, Pro Dota do want to fight bottom. They brought the smoke out. They have uh, Epi and Blink Dagger on the Sand King. This could be their first big fight since the Blink, Blink has been picked up. The problem is, this is Familiar's uh, Koikva being able to jump away. They've already backed up. Swarm play from NIP. Come with me. He's uh, forward along with Cheshire Cat. They've blinked up. Arrow might fall here. He has his Dragonlance. He'll go for the TP. They need a Fire Blast. They missed the Burrow Strike, Cheshire Cat. You were so close. You trusted your instincts, but it was just a, maybe a, a meter away, unfortunately. Yeah, but very, very close. It's rough. Okay, so now it's nighttime, and uh, Monkey King does not gain as much vision now when he's hopping on trees, so it makes it a bit easier for Sand King to position. Yeah, that nerf could have been huge for him. Brodota will try to take the 2 2 tower. This is a very low HP tower right now. Vision will scout out, come with me. Ward was placed down, it's gonna be countered. Nike comes in and just blows away the familiars with Starstorm and Hani's like, well, that's a minute. But now come with me getting jumped on Soul Assumption Medallion. There was a hero there. Jump in, Epi center though onto two. Back you back into wall. It's gonna be onto two as well, but already this fight maybe not going the best for NIP. Era getting low. He should fall as well, too dead, and it's time to back up and away for NIP. They wanted Sanya, they probably will get it with Electric Vortex. They need a Soul Assumption, another auto attack or something. They won't get it. Koikva getting cast up as well. Death Ward gets canceled. Koikva still might fall here, and he will. It's the Maledic that does the job. It's a three for two trade at the end. Mike looking for the fourth. He won't find it. And Pro Dota coming out, finally having a good fight for the first time in a while. Yep, come with me with the tactical bait, just getting in there. Koifa's TPing in though, he's looking for blood, but they did see him with the ward. 
Yeah, they're gonna go for this, I think. Maybe no man on Everybody's Cheshire here. The stun oh, yet. if they can get Mika, he actually leaped away. The stun is there, the Wukong command, and the turnaround for NIP. It's not as bad as it originally looked coming out for NIP as Quake for respawns, get his Bloodstone charge back up to 11. Uh, damage control has been done, I suppose, for, for NIP. Yeah, kills for Storm. Can't be too upset about that one. No. Alright. Still, though, not the best fight in the world for NIP. Era isn't really, you know, providing the most out of this, this hero. Not right, right. It feels ball. like uh, support bench kind of style, you know? Yeah. That's what happens when bench does not get off to the best start. Yeah, I think also in that last fight, he just wasn't in the best position to try to go for some mono attacks. Yeah, just got hit by the uh, blink appy and melted to the Juggernaut Omni Slash. I think a Hurricane Pike is going to help him out a lot, and that's what he's building to. That positioning is very, very important for him. We'll see. Yep, sometimes when you're playing heroes like Sanking, you just need someone to get in there, you know? Make them group up, hit you, come with me, being this stupid ogre, runs <laughs> in there, suicides, sets it up for Cheshire Cat, yeah. excellent fight. And Cheshire Cat's like, yes, this is perfect, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yep, that's nice what he's stuff. been waiting for all game, ever since he's gotten his blink. Very good stuff for uh, for Pro Dota in that last fight. Another pause coming out, this series has had its uh, chock full of pauses, I suppose. But... Uh, so far, the Monkey King has been pretty useful. He's not the most broken hero currently in this game, or he doesn't look like the most broken hero in the game currently. He's had some good plays, but I think Proto have done a very effective job of dealing with Imbrax. Yeah, I think so too, and he still feels strong. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not some game where he snowballs out of control or anything, but he still has a solid stun, slow, grand vision during the day. All right. Feels like a pretty... Solid hero overall. Um, it looks like this game is going to play around Roshan as the next objective for both teams. Uh, Nip have a lot of negative armor with the Solar Crest and Venge Terror. Aegis on Storm could definitely be problematic for Pro, uh, Pro Dota. Yes. But they also are very fast at doing it themselves with the Juggernaut and Bloodlust. Yeah, that's true. I think it really comes down to getting a pick here for Pro Dota or for NIP. NIP had some very good vision top lane. They understand where everybody is. If they wanted to go for a smoke, they could. The dangerous thing also, though, is that there's also very good vision for, for Pro Dota. So both teams with some exceptional wards. Um, some big items also coming out. We talked about how the supports on the Pro Dota side won't be able to... They're not really getting items. Do you think that's the X factor for, for, for NIP to win this game is because their supports are able to scale better than uh, Pro Dota's? And the late game, definitely, it's going to be a huge deal. You'll see Vistage sitting probably somewhere around like 11,000 net worth, maybe in like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like an Agonims with the Solar Crest. Yeah. Uh, they do have the Orchid now and double damage on Koifu, and Pro Dota are about to walk through the yeah, war right now. Yeah, they're going to walk through this war that we were just talking about. Insania will be the first. Torch was going to go for the jump, and Insania, they have the Moonlight Shadow, but boy, is he dead. They can chase after Guard, or the Dust actually hit. <laughs> Come with me has not been spotted, however, but they will jump for it. Blade Fury coming out, Quake for forcing it up. DD's there. They might turn this around. Some more heroes coming in. Fire Blast coming out from Come With Me. Ignite coming out as well. But Ball Lightnings doesn't avoid it. Boogie on the tree line. Come With Me walking a bit closer. This is a dangerous fight, but perhaps an IP don't want to take it. Four versus five even. I don't think they want to try to fight into an epi center from Sand King or a good Star Storm from Mike. Yeah, they're definitely hoping for a bigger pick here so they could start Roshan. But, you know, we'll take what they can get. Gonna dangerous. start it anyways. This is this very, is very dangerous. dangerous. I have some very good armor reduction now. This might happen very quickly, but already yeah, Proto Proto coming smoked in. up. This is gonna be troublesome. The arrow will come through. It's gonna hit right under Roshan. Jumping pro strike on the three stun. coming through. The Star Storm. All of a sudden, this fight not looking good. Mech coming up, but it's already too late. It's Trixie's down. Wave of Terror coming in. Ball lightning. Electric Vortex. Quigfa on the back lines. Picking up Mike, but two dead already. Now the epicenter coming out. Blowing away everybody. Cheshire Cat getting that double kill. A great fight, too dangerous of a play for NIP to make, and Pro Dota respond in kind with a huge fight going their way. Yep, they'll take those four kills in Roshan now. Thanks for starting it, guys. Well played. Man, uh, the Storm, though, you can really see how strong he is in these fights. Even though his team gets three man, uh, you know, uh, Pro Strike, sorry, into the Ag Star, for, uh, Star Storm and everything, uh, Storm's still able to solo kill Mirana in the back. Yeah. So yeah, he is getting very, very scary, even though Pro Dota have Aegis, Swarm Sword is a massive problem for them right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to get much harder, but he needs the rest of his team to stay alive in these fights. They really yeah, can't definitely. afford to fall the way they did that in that fight. So, still though, 
That fight gives Pro Dota about a 2,000 net worth advantage. It was even about a second ago. Um, it, there, there still is a very good shot that NIP can, can come back and take this game. I don't even really want to call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. Right. I would say this game is still actually pretty even. Both teams have uh, very good chances of winning this game right now. Mm -hmm. um, on Pro Dota, their cores are starting to build some items to deal with Storm Spirit killing them. Rana has that BKB in her quick fight, Juggernaut with the Aegis and Manta relatively safe against the Storm Spirit. Um, it's the supports, though, that need to worry about Storm, which Doctor dies in like three hits with an Orchid. Yeah. Ogre bit tank here, probably won't focus him. He has a Solar Crest in his quick fight. It's something he'll actually probably get to within the next few minutes. Yeah, Sitting on 2,000 gold. Come with me, that definitely could use some farm. He's getting in the mid lane, so he's actually got 2,000 gold. Buy a full medallion. Yep. Bottom lane, quick C is Invis. Cheshire Cat Burrow Strike, but there's a lot of heroes behind him, and Sanya included. And uh, Ward dropped down, which I think actually spots Trixie the end of his rune. But Sentry oh, immediately. Oogie. Cheshire Cat thinking about going in on this, but uh, they decide against it. Another Arcane rune for Storm. Fantastic rune. Oh man, he's blowing it. That BKB next, I believe. He's gotten some good runes this game, man. All lightning jump and ooh, that was so close. close. Yeah, lucky to be alive. How do you feel about the Garter Mjolnir, by the way? Oh, man. I thought they were gonna play mid. Right. Mjolnir, pretty, I guess, standard nowadays on Juggernaut, right? The Manta Mjolnir build, I've yeah. seen it a lot more. Yeah. Pretty strong. Um, I don't know if it's the best deal with Storm. He's gonna need a Bissel Blade at some point to try to lock him down. He has a Butterfly though, great item. There's no real uh, natural MKB carrier. Are they gonna go for this? They don't have Storm. They can't. I don't think they can bring Garter down without a pull. No, nope, but all smoke behind him yeah, too. Yeah, they are baiting the hell out of this. So this could be really bad. If NIP lose this fight, there's a good chance they lose a lot more than just this tier two tower. Let's see what happens. They're going to find a Boogie on the tree line, but he's able to get out somehow. That doesn't push him onto the ground. I'm not sure how that happens. I guess we have the answer to our question when it comes to Spirit Breaker. The... If a Pro Strike doesn't doesn't stun him on and put him on the ground, then I don't think a charge should, now that I think about it. Well, the charge breaks the tree. Uh, That's well, the difference. Well, then they get it down. Anyway. This tower is going to get taken down by Koikva. And uh, they are ready to go. And IP. Like Garter is pushing in, they'll have to defend the high ground potentially. I don't think they're gonna go for this, I think they're gonna back up. Uh, and yeah, definitely not. Juggernaut's sitting on like 3,000 gold, he doesn't want to uh, fight with all that reserve gold. Mm -hmm. What other items are coming out right now? Anything important? We, we already talked about it, I think the Storm, Koifa has his BKB on the way, so that is a right. big item, I think. Uh, Cheshire Cat just finished the Lotus Worm on the Sand King. Yeah. Very good item against the Orchid, removes the silence. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's actually... Uh, Basher on Booga. I don't, how big is this? Because uh, the Wukong's command can bash, so... Yeah. It's pretty big for team fights. Well, here's my thought process on it. I think if they get caught in the Wukong's command to begin with, if they're in there fighting, they're probably going to lose the fight anyway. So, it, it's good to catch somebody out. Also, um, he can bash off a bound to strike, I believe. So... Really? I mean, I don't know if that's really important. You're already stunning, so it doesn't matter, but... Right. Doesn't matter. It's counterintuitive. It puts your bash on cooldown. Yeah. Ah, look at Koifa though. Fighting the creep wave bottom, but they have to defend. Full BKB completed. Yeah, he's ready to go now. And uh, these birds, good stuns. Garter does have Aegis still mind you. So soul Assumption, gotta send it right back to Tani, I believe. Doesn't look really doing the damage though. He's gotta back away. The terror has been used. Garter has the Solar Crest uh, from his teammates to help him out. They've got to kill this healing ward though if they want any hope of fighting into Pro Dota right now. Yeah, it's easier said than done too. They can maybe ball any for it, but I think it's a dangerous play to make. Swap in, they fury out, still okay, taking a lot of damage. Just be careful, and he just healings, he heals right back up with the healing ward, but it's gonna, yeah, it's dead now. They have Voodoo Restoration been, on top uh, of this too. That would have been so good if they got the Boundless Strike off with that swap there. Aegis is gone now. If they had another swap, it would be perfect. So, they will. I, yeah, this is the right time to back for Proto. Without the Aegis, without. Uh, with swap coming back off cooldown. 
And that means NIP survive the, the high ground. Oh, if Mike shows him this top lane quick, it might make the, the long zip on him. Oh, he's about to, I think. Yep, there it is. Moonlight Shadow comes out quick, but has spotted him. They need detection, though. He's not there in time. Grixie didn't have any detection. Once that Moonlight Shadow comes out, there's no way they can chase. Quick, but has some sort of detection on him. He can go for it, but it's not there. Yep. Um, Insania almost has his uh, hope. They're going to catch Quick for here. God. Oh, my God. That well, is a gigantic kill. That's huge. That is huge. Dead for 36, even with all of his bloodstone charges. Uh, for some reason, our Dota 2 is in full screen, and I clicked on Spotify behind Dota 2 instead of actually clicking on Dota 2. So, I almost <laughs> did that kill. I almost got real triggered real quick. That was happening a lot at the hub. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not they might be able to take this tier 3 tower. There is no glyph. Whether or not they get racks, probably not. They might be back now. Guard are getting the, yep. the, the tower gold coming out as well. Time to slay some shrines? Yeah, I think so. Alright. All of a sudden, Protoda looking like they're in a very good spot. Yep. In these uh, sieges, when they're all just grouped up, sitting behind the juggernaut, there's no one their storm to really go on. You know, he has no vision of these uh, people that he can actually jump in the back of Sand King, oh, which Dr. Ogre. Oh boy, he can't afford to die here. Vacuum Wukong spam wall coming out, the lag is there. Garter not to get solo, jumping in, Koikfa gets the kill, down for 80 seconds. He has buyback, mind you. Meanwhile, everyone else heaping up on the high ground. The perfect play for NIP to go for, knowing that the shrine was taken, and they were not expecting on a pro to side. And they lose two heroes, the biggest one being Garter, getting caught out pretty quickly. The vacuum into Wukong's command. That's pretty ridiculous. Actually, just lacks the game entirely. Son yeah. of the Cheshire Cat. He's got his Lotus Orb up here. Comes Quigfa. Silences himself, actually, uh, with the Lotus Orb, but uh, still might be able to get this kill. Sandstorm, ball lighting. One more auto attack will do the job. Not only lose two heroes, but lose another one. Oh, but Mika steals the Haze True, and Quigfa's like, damn it. Now I have to just regen with a shrine. Oh well. Man, it's still like, um, you know, Nip can still take these fights with a good vacuum into a boundless strike follow-up with the Wukong's command. So, it is doable. Problem is, it is? They are, there's some good fights for, uh, the thing is there's some big items coming out for Proto. You have uh, BKB for, for Marana from BK, which is going to help a lot. He's also going Ethereal Blade next. When he gets that item, it's even better. Still... <clears throat> There's a Desolator coming for Visage, so no Aghanim Scepter. He's going to be picking up the Deso instead, which is not too far off. You right-click Deso, okay. Visage build. Some more uh, physical damage. That'll um, really help everybody. It's really difficult for Proto to push without the Aegis, because if he spins to hit the tower, then Venge can swap towards the end of the uh, spin mm -hmm. and force Proto to take a fight inside like the Tier 4s of Nip. So... Pretty much this game looks like they're just, both teams are going to try to farm, control the map, and just take Roshan whenever it spawns. It's pretty quick. It's, it's, it's up yeah, in it's about a fast 30 one. seconds. Yeah. And now, knowing this, uh, you can already see NIP kind of trickling out of the base and trying to get some pressure on the lanes. Oh, man, Era has not had the best game. His farm has really been stifled. He was going for um, a full Hurricane Pike earlier. Couldn't get it. Went for the BKB instead, which makes him, I will say, very tanky. He does have a DD room now, but... I don't know, this is a bit dangerous. Oh, yeah, he still like can't stand his ground and fight. Funky King transforming into a banana, checking in the Roshan pit. Not obvious at all. No, nobody will see this. Nobody. Oh, Rosh responds. Do they see it with the Can they see it with the familiars? No. Out there outside of the, the Rosh pit. They can't see him. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, now they see him. They know that it's Okay, right. they do see Juggernaut in the bottom lane. But he does have a TP scroll, yeah, keeping with his right team now. already. They're going to try to get something going here. NIP are circling. They're saying, kind of, let's just stay top and come with me. Oh, if they go kill the shrine, then it might give uh, NIP an opportunity they, here to yeah, sneak Roche in. This. If they smoke out. I don't know. They could just head into Roche right now. How long is this going to take? Their shrine's pretty much just about dead. Garter's going to finish it off, too. This is going to fall quickly. Orchid Solar Crest, but we might see yet another fight like we saw earlier with Pro Dota. It might be too little too late, though. It looks like Crodota aren't able to see this happening, and, and the Roshan agents are going to go to Quake and NIP. 
Yeah, that's huge for them. Yeah, this is massive. This will definitely keep them in the game for quite some time. Got five minutes now to, to work with. They need something going. Yep, Hani is the uh, hidden carry right now of Nip. Almost has a Desolator. Yeah, he's like a thousand away. He gets some extra farm and all of a sudden he's hitting pretty hard. And he helps the rest of his team hurt hit pretty hard. They already have a lot of armor reduction. Auto attack damage. They just need a Desolator yeah. and that's a bit more. Abyssal Blade complete on uh, Juggernaut now. He's about 30 gold off the Blink Tiger as well. Some big items for him. Alright. And I, you're out of the base. This is a bit dangerous. Quick is not anywhere near you guys. I guess you could jump, but I'll take that as he's trying to farm. I don't know about this positioning from an IP. I guess it's even okay. Well, Pro Dota are pretty hesitant to make any move right Stupendous. now because they don't want to really fight into the ages. So they should be safe for now. And I think Storm is going to Imp Sheep's Guard next. He picked up the playmail. He's not far away. Okay. Okay, so he won't have a Lincolns to deal with the uh, Sand King stun or the Blink Abyssal Blade from Juggernaut yet. Yeah, the the, the BKB will help, but that Abyssal is going to be the biggest uh, key for, for Dodo, I think, when it comes to being able to take down Quakefoot. Yeah, I imagine he'll get the Lincolns next. Maybe he'll go for the Bloodthorn, but with Lincolns, he, they actually don't have any instant stun to start the fight on him anymore. Yeah. It'll give him time to get the oh, BKB up. Oh, so dangerous. Abyssal comes out. He is in some trouble. He needs to jump away immediately, but they get the Aegis done. They use Death Ward. They use just about everything. I Can think they get the might bash? be able to jump again. Arrow comes out. Ball lighting through. BKB used. Trying to TP away and should be able to make it. So now Age is gone. Koikfa with a dangerous jump looking for that kill on Mike, And he only loses the Aegis. And uh, he's probably thanking his lucky stars for that. Yep, come with me draws the line right down mid lane. This is the push. There's no BKB on Storm Spirit. The only ultimate they used was the Death Ward in that fight. Probably their least important ultimate. Yeah. 52 seconds now for his BKB. Yeah, Blink Abyssal on the Juggernaut. If they get the initiation on Storm Spirit, it could be bad. This is uh, a tough push to hold for, for me to see the damage. See what they can do. Already some heroes keeping back. Familiar is trying to work under the tier 2 tower bottom. But uh, Garter walks right up and it's right into the range racks and he does a fair bit of damage. Stun will come out, Swap is in. Magic Missile should be coming through, but no, the Blade Fury comes in. Vacuum on the other side of the fight. Ball Lighting into Shiva's Guard is there. Everybody's getting low for Pro Dota. Mike's about to fall, they get the stun off. Ball Lighting's back away, they need more damage. They can't find anybody. The BKB from Mike perfectly timed. Let's see if they can find anything else. The, the Buddha Restoration and Healing Ward are coming up and now they're gonna find Hani. Bro Strike, good force back out. Now Garter forced to use the Blade Fury. They don't want to walk into the wall. That healing ward is absolutely devastating for, for NIP to deal with. It actually heals them all back up to full. So even with that great initiation from NIP, lots of ultimates down now. However, Pro Dota are backing up. Yep, very difficult to uh, push in once they've used their spells like that. It's really difficult, man, for uh, both teams to really like get the engagement they want, you know? Bound the strike stun not long enough for Arrow to follow up with the uh, magic missile right away. Yeah, he, the swap is so, such a long way away that they need more than that. Yeah, they need like uh, some visage birds to stomp him first. The hex would be or stomp him after the swap. Yeah. Which, by the way, just double damage on Garter. Oh, oh, here we go. They this have is got it. this kill. He is done. Dead for 85, and now it's time to fight for Quake Foot. This air cap, Burrow strike away. Now they'll get the hex up at least onto Quake Foot. Coming back in, here's the Boundless, or rather the, the Primal Spring. He's got Boundless Strike in 11, Wukong's Command in 2. Won't need it, it's come with me, should fall here. Desolator has not been picked up? No, it's very close. Wow, they couldn't find oh, him. So he close. was right in that little alcove. Oh man, I can't believe he survived that. I thought he was dead for sure. Well, Trixie's is going to catch yeah, Sanya up I top. I think it's Sanya's dead. So he, mighty dead. he has no mana. Quite just like, I will take that Bloodstone Charge, thank you. Alright, so yep, very dangerous to push up the hill like that into the swap and instant stun. You know, they stun him with the boundless strike first to make sure he doesn't get the spin off after the swap. How do you deal with that? I mean, Lotus Orb maybe? Is that like, what What do you need to do? Like, yeah. That seems Definitely like a very good to, way uh, to initiate. Look at how low that Rax was. That was two more hits with the double damage. They can preemptively Lotus Orb him, so if he does get swamped, nothing happens. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, they probably don't feel as if they can push without Aegis. I, I think that's probably a fair assumption at this point. 
I don't think that got them that much gold. There's still about a, almost an 8,000 net worth advantage coming out for Pro Dota. But uh, NIP will take the Tier 2 tower and sort of even it up. And there's one more Tier 2 tower left on the map, but it's bottom. It's already taken a fair bit of damage coming out from NIP. Well, this, this game is still, again, it's in... If anybody's court, it's again, it comes down to that Roshan, and not only is the next Roshan going to be important for the ages, but the cheese will be next as well. And uh, by that point, Hani will have his Desolator more than likely. We'll have some extra items coming up, potentially those Lincoln's for you talked about for Koifa. Nothing in this quick buy, so not showing anything yet. Um, Boogie will be picking up what seems to be a BKB, which is pretty dangerous. There we'll yep, the uh, Butterfly for Garter will definitely be a big power spike. Oh, that's huge. That is a huge item for him. Do they have a Fear Blade 2 on the Mikke Mana? No, he didn't go for it. He, he changed to what seems to be a Bloodthorn. Yep. Oh, Quickfoot is going to TP home. He's not going to make the play that he made earlier. Uh, and a pretty smart way to TP home as well. If he gets caught there, it's troublesome. But so Prodot are posturing again to kind of assault their tower. Yeah, are they really going to go for this, though, or are they just going to push it in and back up? I mean, again, you talked about having the Aegis, and I think they do need it. I think they feel like they're strong if they fight properly. They have uh, Lotus Orbs. They have one Lotus. They have two Lotus Orbs and a Lincoln Sphere. They can just toss on the Juggernaut along with the Solar Crest while he hits the base. All right, now this becomes more difficult because of those items. Omni Slash coming through. Aerith's going to fall here. Shiva's guard, though, and already this Wukong's command doing some serious work. Quite in the back lines, already taking one down. Looking for Cheshire Cat as well. Swap back under Garter. Primal Sprint coming out as well. Garter is going to go down. They're going to get Mike on top of all of this. They have the detection. They have the gem. Wave of Terror is there. Jump back in. Koifu will find one more auto tech, getting himself a double kill. And all of a sudden, again, NIP hold. They Error was the bait this time. Doesn't even matter. Yep, nice dies. buyback from Era. Yeah. That's what you want, right? You want you want them to go on you, so they have to run into this vacuum uh, Wukong's command combo. I think uh, Pro Dota might have just lost uh, their edge here. You know, they might have not been able to get something done with the, the advantage they had. Yep, there is a buyback up on uh, Garter, but he definitely does not want to use this yeah. at all. Using that buyback is going to put him in a very bad position. Yeah, he really could use that butterfly. Quite comes really close to the Bloodthorn. He almost has it if he wants it. Actually, I think he might have it. Three thousand gold. Playing with buyback though. Gonna to go to work on the tier three tower. Up again. Double damage. Comes revenge. out. There's the Orchid as well. Buybacks everywhere. They really want to come with me. Lotus Storm comes out. Meanwhile, there's gonna be the Happy Center. They get the kill on the Monkey King. That's it for now. Over. Quite fast to jump away. BKB is back up. They need to leave. And uh, they will find Era, who is now going to get have a die back going his way. That is not good. Maybe staying a little bit too long for NIP, and Hani might be next as well. It looks as though they might be able to escape. More birds coming out, stuns coming through. Nicely done from Hani. TP coming out, the arrow, he has to cancel it. Yeah, he knew. And now he's dead as well. So 76 seconds without the arrow of Vengeful Spirit, 68 without uh, this uh, visage. That was a bit too much of an initiation, I think, Rex. Yep, this is a good old roller coaster. Get excited, you know? Guys are going in. They're dead. Don't <laughs> worry, I got this. They buy back and they proceed to feed. <laughs> I think that's that's probably Rax. It might be two sets. They just don't have. They only have three heroes for the next 50 seconds. Yeah, it's looking like two sets. Man, how does that happen? How do they be that aggressive and get caught? Man, that's crazy. Vacuum wall coming out for Earthquake coming in. Maybe they can take the fight. Now the Wukong's command as well. They've got all the abilities they need to win this fight. Catch our cat, they pop the shrine as well. They might actually hold this. Moonlight this Shadow comes out. Like, when it comes out, no one can fight in this. Orchid there, but they get the stun. Good boundless strike saving the life of Koikpa. But the cast comes through. Ball lightning's back into the high ground. The wall is still there, so walking into that is pretty dangerous at this point. They will maybe get the birds here. His guard will clean them up. One more, ignited, but it's gonna stay alive. And that's all he needs is one bird. It's only one set of racks for now, and everybody's back up. Man, look at that, they do hold. All right, so they hold only losing one set of racks. Not bad at all. That could have been so much worse. But Ro 